Okay, let's open the uh, February 1, 2022 uh, Coos County Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm getting an echo back. I guess not now. Okay. Um, we, we're going to slip a community a citizen comment in here. Uh, Carmen Matthews, are you on with us? I am. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. Would you please go ahead? All right. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, thank you for your time today uh, to hear my public comment. Um, I just wanted to uh, start off by talking about um, Lighthouse Beach. It's a beloved close coastal treasure here. I'm sure most of you have visited Lighthouse Beach before. Um, and uh, if you have done so, you probably were using a trail that had been vacated at some point uh, in, in the past and uh, has, has stirred up a little bit of conflict um, in our community. Um, so right now, just, you know, brief kind of history on it. There's a lot of different user, user groups that use this beach. Everybody from surfers and beachcombers, runners, anglers, researchers, families, and we all depend on coastal access to this beach. It's a, it's a nice protected, uh, tucked away out of the, uh, out of sight beach that, uh, has become kind of a, more of a community beach in a lot of ways. Um, Right now, we're we're dealing with an issue where uh, the trail that has been in historically used for well over 60 years uh, is actually privately owned, um, and we are experiencing some conflict with um, the uh, erecting of uh, a new fence and barbed wire and alarms, uh, which is just at this point closed off public access to this beach. So um, at this point, uh, there's a lot of angry um, citizens that are trying to figure out a, a new plan and what to do uh, with uh, our access to this beach. Um, so we're, you know, I was looking at goal 17, coastal shoreland planning goals and guidelines, and it looks like pr protecting public access is uh, a, a big thing that we need to make sure that we as a county are continuing to provide for the public. Um, and at this point, I'm trying to find different ways that we can negotiate with either the property owners or find another solution to uh, restore access. So at this point, I would kind of like to ask uh, you, the commissioners, to maybe direct your legal counsel to um, explore options to restore uh, access back to Lighthouse Beach for the public. Um, and also, uh, I would like to potentially see if we could um, get you all to hear public testimony from a diverse group of uh, citizens on the importance and the uses of this beach uh, through a public hearing at some point. Uh, there's a lot of different safety concerns that I have. Um, getting access to that beach and then OPRD uses it, OIMB uses it, the Marine Institute. Uh, we use it, uh, I'm part of this uh, group called Surfrider. We do water quality monitoring for the for the public every uh, month and we do testing down there, but we haven't been able to. Uh, and I think that's my three minutes, but I uh, just want to say thank you for hearing my comments today. Carmen, thank you very much. I normally don't respond to comments, but I do want to bring you up to date on what's happening there. Uh, we've received several complaints about this issue. Uh, it, it started several, quite a few months ago, and at that time, uh, Wayne Shrunk and I worked together, and he was going, he thought he could work with one of the landowners and has, uh, has to date not been able to uh, uh, get the the access opened reopened um, he 
advised me of the problems again the day before yesterday. Uh, I went, I visited with our county surveyor this morning. He's going to explore options for uh, alternate access. I believe there were some other access trails uh, dedicated uh, when, the, when that whole area was first platted. So he's researching that, and when we get information on that, uh, I'd like to get together with uh, Wayne and, and with you and, and uh, uh, see where what we can do from that point forward. So we are aware of the issue. We are looking at options. Well, that sounds that sounds great. Um, do you think a public hearing might be at this point, at this point, I, I, I'd rather get my facts and data together before we have a public meeting. We don't know enough about it, I think, at this point to to have a meaningful uh, meeting about it. Uh, we know it's an issue. Uh, we don't have to have, uh, a, in my view at least, uh, uh, right now we need to find solutions. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we know the issue. And uh, I'd like a little time to work on solutions before we have a public meeting. All right. Well, thank you again for your time. And uh, I'll hopefully hear from you soon. Okay. Thank you, Carmen. Thanks, thank you Carmen. Both. Have a good day. You okay. Too. Let's, let's uh, move on with the agenda. Uh, uh, item 2A, uh, request approval of agreement number one to net, net Work provider agreement with Southwest Oregon IPA authorized Mike Rally to sign. Who's Elton Wellis? Mike, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, this good is our uh, good morning. This is our uh, updated amendment to our SWIPA contract. It's about an annual increase of 475,000. Uh, most of it has to do with the increase in ACT services, and that's going to uh, include more staff, it's about 300,000. Uh, the rest is about a 3% cap, which has also been built in there. So annually, uh, barring any other adjustments from OHA, we'll get a 3% in January of each year. Do we right. have a motion? I move to approve amendment number one of the agreement with what Southwest Oregon IPA and authorized department head Mike Rowley to sign. We have a motion second. Discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion approved. Item 2B, um, oops, I guess we're going to pull this one for the day. Excuse me. We'll move on to item 3. Where are we? Oh, gosh, we're no, no, late agenda items here. It's such <laughs> a short, short uh, agenda. Item Would you four. like to? Do you want to do the consent calendar? Yes, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Okay. I move to approve the consent calendar. A second. Discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed, motion approved. Item 4A, late agenda items. Uh, uh, request approval to transfer funds to animal control. Sheriff's Department. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. sir. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, animal control will not have enough operating cash for finish fiscal year 2020. Uh, when we found this, we did uh, some deep looking to see exactly what caused this. Um, after reviewing what we found was uh, animal coals expected income was overstated, causing the, the beginning balance to be less than what was budgeted. Uh, more complex uh, calculations and review showed that uh, estimated the beginning balance for animal control would determine some, some of the one-time transfers out of the Roca accounts and COVID relief money were used in the calculation for estimating remaining income which directly uh, impacts the beginning balance. So we're asking for a transfer from either ARP or the general fund of $50,000, which will take care of that and will help with our beginning balance this coming year. Sure, what will happen next year though? Well, we should be better prepared to, to calculate this all out. This was based off what uh, we started out with with uh, speaking with Megan's office and, and Melissa going over that, and so we should have a better handle on it. Right. What I'm asking you though is, are we going to need to put fifty thousand dollars into animal control every year from here on out? I don't think so. No. Were there some major 
expenditures that weren't expected or? No, was, but the primary thing was with, with all the COVID activity stuff, the expected income was, ended up being estimated higher than it, it turned out to be. Yeah, I, I hear you, but I mean, there must have also been expenditures that went along with that. Um, and so I'm I'm curious about those. Not that I'm aware of at this point. I'd have to check with Melissa, though. Okay. Yeah, not this yep. Melissa, the other Melissa. So I understand. There, but. Right. I, I'd like to know more about this before we approve it. I'm reluctant to, uh, knowing, not knowing more than I know right now, I'm reluctant to take money out of either of the two uh, pockets that you you suggested. Um, I don't know how the other two commissioners feel. Well, we're going to be short at least twenty-two thousand dollars if we don't get some of the money, and we may end up having to lay one of the animal control officers off because of the cash flow problem. I don't think we're suggesting that we wait until the end of the budget year. I think uh, Commissioner Sweet is just asking for more information. Are you going to have to lay somebody off in the next two weeks? Uh, Melissa, Mar Melissa is saying that may be the case. We're that short. We only have nine thousand dollars in our current cash right now, and payroll's coming up, and it's twenty-three thousand every month. Unless I get approval to move more money from the general fund sooner than the quarter, then yeah, we'll have to probably let somebody go. And, and there's no other, no other sources of money other than the general fund or uh, our ARP funds. I. We get the big portion of our funding is from the general fund. Um, I will say that revenues are up in animal control. Um, we did raise the fees recently, hoping that that will um, eliminate some of our problems that we're having. Um, I think it was last month we just got approval to raise some of our fees. Hmm. Um, I will say that the, I projected in my carryover that the revenue would be um, income, estimated income would be 31,000. We only got 21. So there's $11,000 that we were short already, which was part of the 25 on the rollover that we were short. Um, it, it, animal control is always a guessing game. I'm gonna try to do a spreadsheet this next year to estimate better. Um, I'm going to break everything down um, and uh, try to anticipate what we're getting um, in and take out the things that are big bulk payments that we've already received that we only get one time. And cost allocation, I'm gonna take that out to try to more accurate my expenses. <laughs> Can we make a, a much smaller uh, transfer to get you through the next payroll to give us more time to look at this. Um, I have a suggestion. This is Thanks, Megan. Megan. Mm -hmm. um, the transfer from the general fund that we normally do quarterly, uh, we can do some of that earlier to give us more time and do a little bit more, get you guys some more information. I like that. Idea. Thank you. That, that's perfect. So. We'll table this for further discussion. In the meantime, make that uh, quarterly transfer earlier. Is that where we are? That sounds good. All right, thank you. All right, let's move on to item four. Does Megan, need a, does Megan need a motion to make that happen or? No, I can just uh, fill out the paperwork and you guys have to sign it. It's just like our quarterly transfer we normally do. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to item 4B, request approval of public nurse job description and approve posting and filling the position. Mike, I'm sorry, I should have picked up on this earlier and get you, so you could have done this when you first presented. Oh, that's not a problem. It's a short agenda today. <laughs> Thank uh, God. Yeah. yeah, we have a new public nurse position we'd like to fill. I will like to point out that we had budgeted extra public health nurse positions uh, for uh, this kind of purpose that we uh, were anticipating increasing. Uh, this one is primarily for uh, uh, STD, HIV, and communicable disease, 
TB investigations and uh, immunization programs within public health. And it is an ONA position. Do we have a motion? I move to approve the job description for public health nurse, public health programs, and approve posting and filling the position. Second. Is there any discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion approved. Move on to item 4C, request approval of survey office manager job description, uh, approve and approve posting and, and uh, filling. Michael. I think it might be. Oh. I, I can cover this one. Okay, thank uh, you. There is a pending vacancy in the surveyor's office. Um, the current um, office manager has uh, given her notice that she is leaving and moving out of the area. And so we revised the job description to reflect the duties that will be being performed in the surveyor's office. And we're now asking for approval of the updated job description and approve posting and filling the position. So I move to approve the updated job description and approve posting and filling the position in the surveyor's office. Second. We have a motion to second. Uh, discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion approved. That completes our uh, agenda items. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. I do believe I do believe we have a late late. We have an emergency uh, sewer line problem at dispatch. Okay. I don't, uh, I don't know if thank, Captain Fabrizio is handling yes. this or not. Thank <laughs> you. I, I saw his email and, and uh, forgot about that. Uh, Gabe, are you here? <laughs> I am. So is that a motion okay. to add the late late agenda item that Commissioner Main just made? Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second to entertain a late, late agenda item. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 So those opposed, motion approved. Gabe, go ahead. Good morning. Uh, thank you for taking the late, late. I'm sorry for, for adding it. Um, no problem. A couple, weeks, okay. a couple weeks ago, the pretty much all the plumbing and dispatch went out. Um, it took a while to figure out what's going on. Unfortunately, the, the pipes that run from dispatch to the center of the road are basically old and mismatched and, and not in alignment, which caused a, a pretty bad backup. They did get it cleared. We've had the trailer parked out there for a while now in anticipation in case they need to use it again, they had to go out of the, the building to use the trailer. So unfortunately, because they're in such bad shape, they have to completely pick up the road. We want to be deep in the center of the road. Um, they have to cross a four inch gas main, which um, anecdotally, typically a three quarter inch gas main feeds the whole street. So it's huge, huge main, as well as a, a 10 inch water main. Um, there's some special hijack screening techniques. Uh, we did seek bids, trying to, to uh, be in compliance with that. We only got one back. We had one person, one company refused to do it. It's too big of a job. Um, Tri-County Plumbing said that they're, they're so busy, they, they wouldn't even be able to come out to look at it for a couple more weeks. Uh, but Johnson Rock did come look and they came in at eleven thousand and sixty five dollars. Um, I think just because it's it's emergent we need to get it fixed and we're gonna have to do it. The the neighbor's driveway is dug up and he can't use it, which I feel pretty bad about. Yeah. I'm just hoping to have a discussion, see if there's some way we could enter into this contract and get it done. And the money is the big question. I'm not sure where where to get it. Um I keep coming to you for ARP funds, but maybe best option if possible. <coughs> Sorry, some alarms going off. I'm gonna mute myself. <laughs> yep, still going off. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. Can you direct us to where to get the money? Um, I mean, there is ARP funds. Other than that, the general fund contingency is, I would rather not take any more out of there. We've taken, I think, 150000 out of there already. Okay. So right. we have to get this fixed. We have a motion to... Uh, mm -hmm award the contract to Johnson Rock and, and pay for that with uh, 
uh, ARP funds. I would so move. So, I'll second. Um, Eleven thousand sixty-five. We do we need to make a sole source finding, Nat? Um, my understanding was that we we sought three bids, um, and we didn't we didn't receive three bids back. But I think that would satisfy that rule for quotes. Okay. Thank good, you. Good question. Thanks for raising that issue. Mm -hmm. Further discussion. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion approved. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get that back in line. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Captain. Um, okay, so let's go on to citizen comments. Uh, Bobby, is there anyone that would uh, that you can see that would like to make comments? No hands. All right. Uh, move on to commissioner reports. Bob, do you want to go first? Oh. <laughs> you've been, you've been <laughs> sick since we last met. <laughs> Yes, I have. I'm still at home. I just um, every day I think I'm getting better, and then I get something that hits me. It's not been fun. It's been what two Saturdays plus a couple of days. Uh, I do have one thing though: um, the Coquille Step Salmon Trout Enhancement Program is being revitalized to try and do so. Uh, enhancement of the salmon run on the Coke Hill. Uh, a group of citizens is going to have a meeting tomorrow night, uh, which would be a Wednesday night at the Coke Hill Fire Hall at 6 p.m. So that'd be a step meeting for Coke Hill, Coke Hill Fire Hall, 6 p.m. Next Monday? Did no, you no, say? no, tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. night. Tomorrow, okay. Tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at the Coquille Fire Hall. Okay, thank you. That's it. Jeremy. Thank you. Melissa. Well, Bob, you sound terrible. I hope you feel better soon. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 <coughs> I sound good now, though. Did you get, <laughs> did, you get Deb, did you get Deb sick too? Oh, yeah. Nice going. Mm -hmm. She's all over it, though. <laughs> she, she's tougher than I am. She's quite a bit younger than you, too, I think. Oh, by far, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Melissa. Um, let me see. I have been having a lot of Elliott State Research Forest uh, meetings because there is a bill this session, which legislative session open today. Um, to final, well, to take the next step in that transition towards the LA being a research forest for Oregon State University. It's Senate Bill 1546. Um, first hearing is today at one in front of the Senate Committee for Natural Resources and Wildfire Resilience. And um, that's an invited testimony day as well as the private forest accord is on the same agenda. And they are also having a invited testimony day uh, the public hearing is this Thursday from the same committee at one o'clock. If anyone is interested in testifying on either issue, um, I believe that you can get signed up after today's hearing to go ahead and sign up. Um, the Predator Damage Control District also has a bill again this session to try to renew that. It has not been assigned to a committee yet. Um, And then also, as we've talked about previously, the county partnered with Coos Bay and North Bend um, to potentially get some funding to work on coordinating our homeless response issues. That bill is also in this session. So I, I, mean, I think those are the big ones that we are tracking this session and potentially working on. I don't know if other commissioners have other uh, big ones that they're thinking about, but I know as a commission, those are ones that we've talked about as a group. Um, Melissa, could I interrupt? What about the no. private forest accord? When, when when's the hearing on that? Or did it's today? It's today. Okay. Yes, the committee is scheduled from one to three. Yeah. Um, right now, from what I'm hearing, is the Elliott bill is going to go first and the private forest accord second, but that's at the pleasure of the committee chair. And right. so, 
I don't think there have been any time certain put out for okay. either one. Th thank um, you. Yeah, of course. Uh, we held our Board of Health meeting and met with Anthony, our Public Health Director, and some of our Public Health staff to talk about how things were going in Public Health and some of the challenges that they've had. I don't know if Commissioner Sweet or Commissioner Main wants to talk more about that, but it was an interesting conversation. I met with Alex Scarlatos, who is working, I mean, who is running for Congressional District 4. Um, I am, I tell everyone, and I know my other two commissioners feel the same, happy to talk to anybody who wants to come here and talk about the issues that Coos County is facing and um, just talk generally about the challenges that we see in the region. I know the three of us may not always agree on solutions for challenges, but I think we generally agree on what the challenges are. So I, I appreciate him coming down and, and meeting with me. Um, I'm looking, we had a meeting yesterday about renewable hydrogen and a nice presentation from Shannon Souza of Ocean talking about renewable hydrogen and, um, and some of the opportunities there and what, what, they're, what the port is wanting to do is put, in, is put in an application to be partnered with a city and with a port in Scotland to talk about their experience with renewable hydrogen. There's money from the Department of Energy to help make those collaborations um, and connections. And so we are having discussions with them and the city of Coos Bay about it. I think the city of Coos Bay is meeting tonight to also discuss it a little more. Uh, we had a courthouse improvement meeting. Um, Coos County has put in a request for money for courthouse improvement funds to potentially paint the outside of the courthouse, replace the rest of the windows um, with energy efficient windows and put new carpet down in the hallways so the carpet would all match and wouldn't um, necessarily have ripples, which are uh, not a good feature in carpet and a potential safety risk. Um, so that's something that we put in a request for. There will be another meeting later in March to prioritize those requests. But uh, I believe our request was very reasonable and well thought out and well received. Oh, I've been I've been participating on the Land Conservation Development Commission Rules Advisory Committee for shoreline armoring um, of any coastal roads uh, that are ocean fronting. And um, it's been an interesting conversation. I did receive a phone call yesterday from Al LePage, who, is, um, who has been very active in the Oregon Coast Trail. And he brought up an issue that I hadn't thought about, which is the fact that the shoreline armoring could potentially impair the ability to use the Oregon Coast Trail. So that's something I'll follow up with Al about because the Oregon Coast Trail is also an issue that we've been actively working on here in Coos County. And so I thought I thought that was an interesting point that Al brought up. Um, and with that, I think I'll just leave you there. I think that's probably plenty. Oh, self-service kayak rentals, which I'm really excited about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had a meeting us, on that. Tell us about I that. Had, I haven't had a chance to send Bob the video, but um, there is a company that makes um, kayak rental, they're boxes like four high, they look like metal gym lockers. And you put mm -hmm. four kayaks on one side, four paddle boards on the other side, and people can use their cell phone to pay for it and unlock it and rent a kayak. And so I've been um, bending John Rowe's ear from Public Works about it. And uh, I think he's going to meet with them later this week, but it's an interesting opportunity. We we like to have things for people to do and access to, you know, water flotation devices, but it's never made sense for us to hire somebody to actually rent kayaks out because there's not enough traffic to pay somebody to be there renting them all day. But if there's an app and they could use, you know, put in their credit card number and just take it out themselves, um, it looks like it's feasible. So John's had to listen to me several times about this over the last week. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. You know, we have uh, we've put in a uh, uh, kayak launch at uh, Ten Mile Lake, and we have plans to do the same at the uh, Powers Park in the big pond for the big pond they have there. Uh, so that's all well and good. 
but if you don't have a kayak or or a, a what do you kind of a board paddle board, a paddle uh, board. You can't use these things and so i this is a nice amenity and i really appreciate melissa's mm -hmm work on it. Uh, John received the suggestion very enthusiastically. Uh, so it, it fits right in with what we're already doing and that's why I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. There's also a brand new kayak launch at Eel Lake too, North of Lake. Yeah. yeah. And it's a beautiful one. There is. I, I just don't know what the state process is to go through with the state to put rentals on there. Um, so I thought we'd try this and see uh, you know, the total cost, there's a total cost, and then we keep 80% of the profits until we recoup that amount. And then it's a different split. But anyway, it's interesting. We're still in the really early stages of looking at it. So, Okay. Uh, I'll give my commissioner's uh, commissioner report. Uh, we had a fair board meeting. Uh, uh, Aaron Mast had... Uh, who's been the president of the fair board for several years now and who to whom we owe uh, a, a great thank you for his work and I, I really think he's has been a really positive influence on 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 the quality of our fair uh, he worked throughout the uh, pandemic to make sure we had it as soon as possible uh, put it on last year was essentially a very very short notice I can't remember it just seemed like it was about a month and a half notice and it was one of the most successful fairs we've, we've ever had um, Brad Burnett uh, a current uh, fair board member was uh, elected to replace Aaron as Matt, uh, Aaron as uh, president of the board and uh, Dennis Herman uh, was re-elected as vice president uh, look forward to a, a more nearly normal fair this year uh, joined with uh, Melissa and Bob with the Board of Health meeting uh, ha we held a private for a, a, a meeting amongst uh, local uh, small timberlands owners regarding the the newly proposed uh, private forest accord uh, that is being presented uh, for adoption at the short session of the legislature this year it, it's a it's a big piece of legislation uh, impacts different forests in different ways um, I, I think there's going to be a lot of discussion about it. I uh, also met with the Oregon Timber Counties Coalition, uh, a recently formed uh, coalition of, of uh, Oregon counties that have U.S. Forest Service lands in them. And uh, they have a very good group that's uh, uh, forming that, uh, th that coalition. Uh, the Coos Bay Wagon Road Appraisal Committee met uh, a week ago, I guess just last Friday. Uh, really the first meaningful meeting we've had of that group in about three decades. And so it's, it's an important first step, I think, to getting a, a, a fair uh, value put on the Wagon Road lands for calculation of the payments in lieu of taxes we get from the BLM uh, from those lands. Uh, joined Melissa at the courthouse uh, task force. Uh, I think she was very modest. She had presented uh, a wonderful proposal on behalf of Coos County uh, would help uh, help upgrade our, our courthouse. I perceived, perceived it was very well received and I thought heads and shoulders above almost all of the other proposals. So thank you for that, Melissa. Did sit in on an Elliott information uh, session. Uh, Melissa, thank you for all the work you've done with that. Um, had a meeting with the AOC Natural Resource Advisory Committee and another meeting regarding the Forest Trust Lands Advisory Committee. And, uh, and then again, uh, along with Melissa and, and Bob, were you there? Yeah, the renewable hydrogen presentation yesterday. I don't think you were up to that one. Then uh, lastly, uh, I had some guests over the weekend, house guests, my sister-in-law and her husband. He, he's an Italian 
and uh, they are here for a short while in the United States and they, they hit the coast uh, of course when we had beautiful weather and uh, uh, it, it's helpful sometimes to see what how what a beautiful place we live in and, and see that through other people's eyes we take it for granted but uh, this really is a special place and I know that we're always dealing with problems and that's part of our role but we we can't forget should not forget uh what a wonderful place we live in and that concludes my comments is there anything more to bring before the board of commissioners in that case we will adjourn thank you everyone